I'm Camille, uh, also known as Cactus of the Purple. Um, that's the everything else. Um, I'm the CEO and uh, programmer for Cactus Games, and we're working on our launch title, which is Legacy of Barabash. Ooh, um, that is a hard one. That was the ColecoVision. I would have been five years old at the time, so we're looking at 84. And um, I don't even know what it's called. It was like this racing game. Um, all I remember, I had to steer and press the pedals, and I'd eventually crash, and it'd be game over. Uh, um, but yeah, that was the first game I played, and I've pretty much been addicted to games since. And I've gone through the Commodore 64s and Amiga, and finally PC, and I think 97 is when I made the uh, crossover to PC. So. The first game that I made was um, actually this little um, project I did for uh, one of my course works. It was, uh, it was basically a Stickman fighter. Um, this was back in 2001 before Stickman fighter actually became popular, I think. Um, and it was just a really simple beat em up. Um, did it as a project in sort of 10 days, learning C at the same time and bullets. So um, that was a lot of fun. and. Um, after that, I started working on my second project uh, called TL, which 10 years later probably hasn't really made much progress on it. And oh, finally, about a year and a half ago, um, we started working on um, Legacy of Barabar. Uh This year, um, we've mainly been working on Legacy of Barabash. We're really ramping up how we've gone uh, through things. Um, it's been a learning experience because this is my first real proper game and it's also my first main project on Java so and Android. So it's all a bit of a... There's a lot there to learn, um, especially since we've already had to... We were writing the engine all ourselves. So we went through one engine and we hit a brick wall and had to start the scratch, which is a bit painful. wanted to make a project and I knew that whatever that we were working on was way too ambitious to actually turn to our first game. Um, so I kept dropping it back and dropping it back to make it something simpler until I came up with something that I didn't care about at all. So needed a story behind it, needed everything else like that and it took a dream that I actually had and wrote it, wrote it up a bit more as a script. And it grew, it, it just eventually grows on you. As you actually go through a process of thinking about something, you start thinking about it 24 seven, when you sleep, you wake up and you're thinking about it, you, you keep a notepad by your bed, and you just start writing notes and notes and more, discussing it with the people that you're working with. And it's this incredible place that you're at where you, the game exists in its own kind of universe and everybody that you're talking about it sees a, a separate fragment of that and you, just by bouncing ideas off each other, you kind of bring that to the surface um, and beyond that you start assigning roles and um, it's kind of easy for us because we're a small team so I'm, pretty much most of the coding is done by me, um, my wife Sue, she's in charge of um, making sure all the art's cohesive and talking to uh, Stefan and Sebastian, who are actually doing um, a lot of the actual legwork for the art. And we've got um, Simon, who's... Um, Simon's role is actually... Uh, start off really simple. He was just meant to do the sound for it, but it's just grown and evolved. Um, he's made up these incredible languages for, the, uh, for the, all these different races. And um, that's actually now becoming part of the central um, part of the game, which is actually going to be... Implementation wise, but we haven't actually worked out exactly how it's going to work, but it's, it's, I think it's going to be one of those unique things that if it actually works out well, it's, no one else has seen this before. I would actually probably pull out one of the games that I have, have been sitting on my list and been just, yeah, I'll get around to playing that when I have a bit more time, and that's probably The Witcher 2. Um, I really loved the first one, um, and actually some of the desi design choices in that was actually what led us to actually make this. 
and with The Witcher 2, I went, oh, brilliant, I'll support him, I got it through GOG, so it would be DRM free. And it's, I probably put two, three hours in and then I just haven't had the time to go back to it. And I just love to actually give it that whole dedication to actually go through it. But I, I've probably got 30 or 40 games in my, yeah, I'll get around to playing that list at, at some point in time. Early next year, I really want to get the um, internal beta, uh, sorry, and the probably open beta finished. If we can get World 1 of the game done, uh, all the Enviros, all the sprites, NPCs, quests, and get it out there so people can actually look at it. Um, that's actually pretty important to me. I actually want to get a lot of feedback because um, oftentimes you can just get so self-absorbed and go, hey, this is brilliant, this is great, and then you show it to somebody there, they go, it's not intuitive. And I really want to avoid that, so the more people that actually get a hand on it, the better. And ideally, I don't want to rush it for the sake of rushing it, but I would actually like to get it um, sort of out before May or June, which would, which would give us about a two-year cycle to actually get the game out. Because um, there's a lot more that we want to do with it, and just from that uh, system of that, the game grows and expands, um, you know, you think about the, all these additional stories and all these other projects that you want to work on, and you're just going to have to like write them down and put them aside for the time being, and hopefully you have time to, get, to come to them in the future time. So, um, you know, if I didn't have to worry about a mortgage and you know had like food and, and that sort of stuff uh, um, covered, I would be happy to do like almost every waking moment of my life just making and building games, whether just to tell a story, just to get people, some, at least one person to go, wow, you know, if you, get, if you can get that kind of moment, it's just all worth it. And, and that's what I want to do, I want to tell stories. I want to actually make people think.